Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week we've got the regulated Brocock Compato Sniper HR on test. But before that, I'm setting up a trial to try and show just how effective peanuts are in a grey squirrel feeding station. Right, I'm out on a squirrel shoot this morning and I thought I'd try something just a little bit different. Now I'm using a feeding station as usual, but I've actually set up two feeders close to each other. One of them's filled with peanuts and the other one's filled with uh, mixed corn, which I think is wheat and cut maize. Now, the big difference is that you can't tend to pick up decent peanuts for much less than about £1.50 per kilo whereas mixed corn tends to be about 50p per kilo. So that makes peanuts about three times the price. The thing is, that they tend to be an ace squirrel attractor. They're certainly my go-to squirrel bait. So I thought that by setting up two feeders with separate feed right next to each other, we'd be able to see if the peanuts really do have the edge. Now, it's not very scientific, but I thought it would be interesting. So that's the setup I'm going to be using. Now, the reason for controlling grey squirrels in these woods is because of the extensive damage that they cause to the trees, but also because of the impact that their predation on the eggs and chicks of songbirds has on native wildlife here. Um, the kit I'm going to be using is the FX Impact Mark II air gun. Um, I actually think we used it the last time we did a squirrel shooting video. Now, it's a very accurate gun nice and light for me to carry around. It's got a massive magazine capacity, but most significantly today, it's just a really nice compact gun, so it handles very nicely in the hide. Um, I've paired that with an MTC Mamba light scope, and that's clamped on with sports match scope mounts. Uh, so that's the kit, let's go and get settled in. This is an early morning session, the plan being to catch hungry squirrels as they venture out for their first feed of the day. I've managed to forget my shooting sticks, but that shouldn't matter. The hide isn't much more than 20 metres from the feeders, so there really is no excuse for missing from a sitting position. Well, I don't want to talk too much now that I'm in position. But uh, as I said at the start, we've got two feeders right next to each other. The one on the left is the peanuts, the one on the right is the mixed corn. What we'll try to do is pop something on the screen and maybe show you a tally as the squirrels turn up. Um, the feeders have both been in position for about a fortnight. The hide's been set up for about a week. Um, the feed has been going down pretty quickly over the last week, so it'll be very interesting to see what comes along. The squirrels have had plenty of time to home in on the feeding station and to get used to my hide, so I'm not expecting to have to wait very long for today's first arrival. And sure enough, about 15 minutes after we settle in, our first diner puts in an appearance.
was a lovely clean kill. That one took a while to make its mind up and it did initially look like it might have been going to the corn feeder but it's one nil to the peanuts. Another clinical headshot there. That one seemed to be really on edge and I think it was either spooked by the blood on the feeder or by the dead squirrel on the ground, but it's another one to the peanuts. And I can't say I'm particularly surprised because they are usually a brilliant squirrel attractor. And there's another one to the peanuts now. It looked for a moment like that one was going to get wedged between the rope and the feeder, but it dropped pretty quickly and it was another very clean kill.
lost 4 0 to the peanuts. Now, the squirrels aren't exactly coming thick and fast, and they're not really as confident as I'd expected them to be, but when they do turn up, it's certainly clear what grub they want. Right between the eyes. That squirrel won't have known what hit it. Now the FX Impact is a very quiet air gun, but those two two pellets don't have to make a crack when they hit home. And that's another one to the peanuts, which takes it up to 5 0. Right, well it's been quite a lot slower than I'd expected, but nonetheless we've managed to account for five squirrels. Now this was supposed to be a fairly short session before breakfast, but I've actually been in the hide now for more than three hours and I'm absolutely starving. Now what I will say before I wrap up is that the peanuts have evidently been the squirrel's choice of, of feed this morning. Um, and I'm not at all surprised. I've been using this stuff for years. It does cost a little bit more, but I would say that if you can justify that cost, it's well worth it. Now, of course, that's not to say that the corn wouldn't have attracted squirrels if they hadn't had another choice. And we see it all the time with pheasant feeders. What the peanuts achieve is an attraction when there are other food sources available. So whereas the corn would probably work brilliantly in the winter, the peanuts today are drawing in squirrels when there's a lot of other food around. There's a lot of ripening beech mast here, which they absolutely love. So from my point of view, peanuts will certainly remain my first choice of bait for squirrel feeding stations. Not the busiest of sessions there, but the peanuts certainly proved their worth. And now it's the Air Gun Show news. This is the Ergon Show News. The threat of a boycott of the 2022 Commonwealth Games has intensified. India's Olympic Association says it will make a decision next month on whether it will pull out of the Games in Birmingham entirely, in protest at the lack of shooting on the programme. Organisers say they engaged in full with the shooting fraternity and did offer a compromise solution where just rifle and pistol events would be included and they say they are still very hopeful a boycott can be avoided. The Northern Shooting Show has announced new dates for next year. After the Maybank holiday moved to Friday the 8th of May, the show will now take place on the 8th and 9th. As always, the show will take place at the Yorkshire Event Centre and the surrounding showground in Harrogate. Head to northernshootingshow.co.uk to buy tickets now. If you're looking to invest in some new night vision, check out what might be the best NV bargain ever, courtesy of Scott Country. Right now, the Yukon Photon is on sale for just £450, with UK Next Day delivery. With up to 280 metres detection distance, the Photon can handle any sort of night shooting, and it also works in daytime and fits standard 30mm scope rings. To find out more, head to scottcountry.co.uk slash photon deal. And finally, Issue 125 of Ergon Shooter is still on sale. This one's a gear special, packed with tests and reviews of some of the hottest new airgunning hardware, from the Gamo Boxer to the Daystate Genus, as well as two Lugers and a host of pellets too. There's also advice for daytime ratting and shooting squirrels with a Springer, plus the chance to win an Air Force One Sirocco kit. Pick up Ergon Shooter in good news agents now. That was the Ergon Show News.
About a year ago, I reviewed the Brocock Bantam Sniper HR, a fantastic air gun that was made even better by the addition of a Huma regulator. Now, what I've got here is the Brocock Compato Sniper HR, which has also been given the Huma treatment. Now, I know from experience that the Compato is a fantastic little semi ball pup, so it will be interesting to see how this model shapes up. So, let's kick off with a quick look through its main features. This is the soft touch version which retails for £849. It's an ambidextrous stock and that soft touch finish makes it really grippy, even in the wet. And if that's not enough, there are also patches of stippling on the fore end and pistol grip. This is not a gun that's likely to slip out of your hands. Although comparatively short, the forend is still long enough to accommodate a variety of different holds, and it's equipped with an integral accessory rail. I really like the steep pistol grip, which makes for excellent trigger attack, although the thumb hole configuration doesn't enable you to shoot thumb up. Moving back along the stock, the cheek piece is nice and high, perfect for scope use and the soft rubber butt pad is height adjustable so you can tweak it to achieve perfect alignment between eye and scope. You can see that the rear of the stock is skeletonized. It looks neat, but it also helps to shave down the weight. This version actually tips the scales at around 3.2 kilos unscoped, which is certainly very manageable. At about 85 centimeters long, it's also a fairly compact air gun, which lends itself very well to hunting in confined spaces. Most importantly, the balance is excellent. This is an air gun that feels great in the shoulder. I've always been impressed with the engineering on Brocock air guns, and this one is no exception. The black finish of the metalwork looks really neat, and the Lothar Walther barrel is crowned and choked for optimum accuracy. The barrel shroud actually does a pretty good job of hushing down the muzzle report, although it's also threaded to accept the silencer if you want to make it really quiet. This model has an 11mm dovetail scope mount, which features a forward swept intermount to accommodate the gun's semi ballpup configuration. Behind that sits the magazine. I understand that the gun also comes supplied with a single shot tray, although the review gun only came with the standard 10-shot magazine. It's a tried and tested unit which works brilliantly. The magazine is indexed by a chunky side bolt, which also cocks the gun and probes a pellet home into the breech on its return stroke. That big handle feels great in the hand and the mechanism works brilliantly. Whether you're a hunter who wants fast follow-up shots in the field or a plinker planning some rapid fire tin toppling. Positioned just in front of the bolt handle is a power adjustment dial. It's not a feature that I regard as being essential on sub 12 foot pound air guns, but I reckon it could be very handy on higher powered models, which are available in up to 46 foot pounds. One thing I really do like about this power adjuster is that it turns with very clear stops. The 177 calibre test gun is churning 11.4 foot-pounds and it's doing it extremely consistently. Unlike the original model, there's no discernible power curve and this gun showed a variation of just 4 feet per second over a string of 30 shots. That impressive performance has clearly been given a boost by the addition of that high quality Huma regulator. Air pressure is displayed on a gauge at the front of the cylinder and when it's time to refill, it's simply a matter of twisting the collar around that gauge to expose the inlet and then plugging in the supplied quick fill probe. The Compato Sniper HR super consistent power delivery wouldn't count for much without a decent trigger and this gun has a brilliant adjustable two stage unit. The design of the blade is brilliant, as is the mechanism. Straight from the box, the first stage has just the right amount of weight and travel and then comes to a distinct stop before the second stage breaks very, very cleanly. I'm not usually a fan of safety catches that are positioned close to the trigger blade, but this one is actually pretty good. It's a paddle type switch and you don't have to adjust your hold to use it. 
The gun is safe when it's over to the right and you simply push it across to the left when you're ready to take the shot. I think that's most of the Brocock Compato Sniper HI specifications covered. Let's get on with shooting it. Well, I'm having to contend with a bit of a breeze, but nonetheless, that's a five shot group at 30 meters that looking through the scope had to fall within about 10 millimeters from center to center, possibly less. So still very good performance. Um, the trigger felt absolutely great. And seeing that sort of accuracy, there's no denying that this gun has certainly got the pedigree to tackle live quarry. Although the Brocock Compato Sniper HR is not a cheap air gun, I still think it represents excellent value for money. When it comes to build quality and performance, there isn't much in the £800 price bracket that can get close to it. The addition of that Huma regulator has taken this gun's performance to the next level, and I reckon it could be a fantastic all-rounder for anyone looking for a compact air gun to use for serious hunting. Look out for the new and improved Airgun Shooter magazine, packed full of technique, gear and insight from some of the best shooters in the industry. Brand new look and free video content. Pick up your copy today in stores or online. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of their BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits you could be taking advantage of through Airgun Membership.